is George Daniel. I am a two-time national fly fishing champion, former head coach of the U.S. fly fishing team and competitor for Fly Fishing Team USA, and now author of Dynamic Nymphing and a guest lecturer all across the country. The name of the nymph is called the Czech Cat Nymph. It's a pattern used in micropolar chenille. It's a UV material that hairline carries, but it is a pattern, it's what they call an anchor pattern. It's a larger pattern in general using a tungsten bead and then also quite a bit of lead wire underneath as the underbody. This is the Czech Cat Nymph. It's one of my favorite anchor flies. It's a heavily weighted fly that's designed to get the flies down deep where they belong. This fly in particular, what we're going to be using is a competition style hook. Competition meaning that it's barbless and it has a very long thin point. That's one of the things that defines competition hooks are barbless with a very long thin point, allowing the hook to be set very easily and very efficiently without much tension on the hook set. What we're going to do here is we're going to create an anchor fly. So what we need is weight. So we are going to put a tungsten bead. This has a this is a size six curved caddis competition hook, a five thirty seconds tungsten bead along with lead wire. This is going to be the, the guts that's going to pull our fly down deep where it belongs. The first step is securing the lead wire, which we've already done. So we skip that process, but we have our lead wire secured onto our hook shank. About eight to ten wraps of thirty thousandths lead wire for this particular fly. And what we're going to do first is create a put our rib, which is going to tie down our overwing onto this caddis pattern. So all I'm going to do is just take a section of 4x tippet, start at the top, and then just tie it all the way down. Just I like to tie more monofilament in because it has a tendency of slipping sometimes through thread wraps so I like to tie the whole thing down. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down over half the way down the bend of the hook. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use micropolar chenille to create our body. This is a product that first came from Europe and they originally called it straggle material. This is just a micropolar chenille, just a small chenille but you can see tiny little rubber legs with UV material sticking out. Just something that sometimes I think gives a little more attention, creates more of a trigger for a trout to take. So what we're going to do is just simply, instead of having to use a dub body, taking all the time to create a dub body, all I'm going to do is tie in this micropolar chenille, right at the same point where I stop with my mono rib, tie that in, and then proceed to wrap up towards the thorax. And all I'm going to do now is just continue wrapping, making tight wraps one next to the other, utilizing this micropolar chenille. This material has a tendency of folding down. What we want are for, for those legs to kind of stick out nice and straight. It's just like the legs sticking underneath a scud or underneath a caddis. So what we want is to sometimes stroke these fibers back, getting those fibers out. Once we do that, proceed wrapping forward. Again, this is so much easier than dubbing a body. And because this is a larger fly, what I want to do is I want to create a nice taper. And because I have a thicker diameter here with my with my lead wire, what I want to do is actually go back a little bit, wrap back over the old material, just so I can create a little thicker body and create a nice little taper in my, my rig. Okay. And with this size six, just one time back over is all I need. Once I'm on the lead wire, I'm just going to make my wraps nice and tight because one of the things I don't want, I don't want to see any lead wire. I want to make sure I cover all the lead wire. One wrap next to the other. Just take your time. And if you make a mistake like I did there, it's always easy to go back. You can see how those little legs are starting to stick out. Continue to wrap forward until you come to the thorax area. Now all I'm going to do, once I'm wrapped about, I would say maybe about three quarters of the way up the hook shank, I'm just going to tie off my body color, which is a UV olive. And now I'm going to tie in my thorax, which is a UV black. What I'm going to do is just trim the edges, give myself an easier thing to tie into. Tie the black material down near the bead, wrap back to where I want to begin the thorax, and then proceed to wrap forward towards the bead. Again, same thing, I want these materials to stick out nice and straight, so I'm going to stroke this material. And making no more than probably four or five wraps, I'm just going to wrap the thorax. Two, three, four. There's our thorax. I'm going to just tie down and tie off this material. Cut our bite. Now, for sake of argument, because the worst thing that can happen is for you to get distracted, fly or the material can come unwound, so we'll just 
do a little safety net there, use the hooks, a little whip finish. Now what I'm going to do, I want an overwing. I'm going to use an overwing to give this fly a two-tone effect like most caddis have, kind of a, a lighter bond with a darker wing. So what I want to do is create a platform to lay my this overwing on top of. So I'm going to take my scissors now, stroke the fibers down off this side, and then whatever materials are still sticking straight up, I'm just going to take my scissors and just start trimming all the way back. Maybe a little bit off the side. So we have a nice little flat landing ground platform for my overwing. Okay. Normally people tie in the wing case first and then fold over and tie down again. We don't need to do this. This was a pattern or a technique that Yuri Klima from the Czech Republic shared with me. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to tie your monofilament rib in first and then at the latter part when you're done with the body only then are we actually going to tie in the overwing. For the overwing, this is just a mottled olive oak thin skin cut to the length that you want. So I've already done this. I've cut this maybe about an eighth of an inch in diameter for this particular fly. It needs to be wide enough so when you lay it down over top it completely goes over about halfway on either side of the caddis. So you cut it to the length and now what I'm going to do is just simply tie this directly right on top. And when I apply pressure, what I want to do, I want to apply pressure directly down. If I apply pressure directly off to the side, it's actually going to can or turn this material. So a couple loose wraps, and then when I apply pressure, it's directly down, cinching the material straight on top of the hook shank. Again, another safety net, just one whip finish, just to secure things as you're making your monofilament wrap, just in case disaster strikes, which it does. So what I'm going to do now is just take my thin skin and create a little tension there. You can see, just stretching it. Create a little tension, and all I'm going to do here is hold it tight with my left hand, hold the material in place. I'm going to take my monofilament rib, wrap over tight, and cinch it. Now I can let go with my left hand, and I can just flip flop and back and forth between my dominant hand and my non dominant hand as I wrap this monofilament rib up the body. What I want to do here, I'm just weaving in and out because I want those materials, those leg materials to stick out. If I just wrap straight, chances are I'm going to tie some of those materials down. So what I want to do is I want to weave in between that leg and material. I'm just going to continue all the way up. I don't want to overlap, I just want to make one nice wrap, space out to the next, to the point where I'm ready to secure this. Hold this down. Now with monofilament, again, monofilament has a tendency of sliding. So what I'll do often, so after I secure it, I'm going to take my monofilament rib and just wrap the bobbin around a couple times, and then, again, a couple wraps. This is going to eliminate any chance of that monofilament slipping through the whip finish. Take the whip finisher, and one or two wraps, and you finish your fly. If you want, you can use head cement. Most of the time I don't. If you make a good whip finish, you really don't need head cement. Take off, cut off the excess here, and then right there you have a check catnip.